When we were developing the Triple Creek Restoration Project, the primary goal we set out was to reconnect the stream with its floodplain, and in so doing, develop conditions conducive for beaver to someday take over the project. By raising the stream bed, we aim to create better hydrology for riparian plants to thrive and to one day provide food and construction materials for beaver. We set objectives to increase the stream length by encouraging new twists and turns, also known as sinuosity, and to widen the channel in places where it was too narrow to start accumulating sediment. Across the project area, we aimed to see greater heterogeneity, meaning that whereas we started by and large with a straightened, narrow, deep channel, we would end up with a robust sequence of riffles and deeper pools, greater diversity in structure, temperature, and other habitat features. In this video segment, we will share with you some of the changes that have brought us much closer to our vision for this site. Sediment aggraded. We actually buried part of our coastline in sediment. When we constructed this coastline, there was a trickle of water coming through. That staff gauge that you see attached to the T-post, there was no water at the bottom of it. If you're standing over here, you can see the numbers on the staff gauge. Can anybody see where the sediment goes to? If you're standing like where Todd is or Jerry. So we were at zero on the staff gauge for water and sediment when we began. Now where are we at? Can anybody read it to me? 4.0. So there's there's four feet of aggradation right there in one year. Kind of like what we thought would happen in several years. But it was an incredible high water year. The timing was perfect for installing structures in the stream and then having an extraordinarily high water event. look at how these changes are occurring. Here you're looking at the original stream bed with a BDA installed, including its brush mattress on both the upstream and downstream sides. Our BDAs have started functioning the moment they were woven. However, the changes are greatest during the freshet, or high water in springtime, when sediment builds up on the upstream side of the BDA and deep pools often form on the downstream side. This increases the heterogeneity of the channel, brings the stream bed closer to the floodplain, and in some cases gives the channel more length through new twists and turns when the water goes around a BDA. They're buried in sediment. It's exciting to see the water rise and, and in the spring during high flows, I love coming out and taking pictures with the water topping over the post. But even more exciting is when the water level drops and you get to see what's underneath. And when we actually see this amount of sediment underneath the water, you know, we've raised the stream bed. And that is really what we're after. That's how we're gonna get the water back up onto this floodplain.
So this spot we think was, although we haven't surveyed it yet, it was probably about four feet lower would be my guess, at least maybe five feet lower. So in this one spot at least we've aggraded considerably. The incision trench has widened and we've gained a lot of channel length through a series of meanders here. So we're seeing exactly what we hope to see at warp speed. <laughs> It's amazing to watch on the ground how this sediment that builds up on the upstream side of these BDAs is bringing the stream bed closer to its floodplain. Between 2015 and 2018, our topographic survey showed that the channel length had increased by over 25%, or almost 500 feet. We also showed a reduction in slope of over 20%. We're really excited to see what the next topo survey brings. So here we're watching a BDA that was initially installed as a deflector dam. You can see the stream go around the deflector dam, and you can see the channel widen and lengthen. An alder falls in, and then we decide to turn it into a channel spanning structure. The next spring, you can see how the stream goes around that structure, turning it back into a deflector dam. The stream continues to widen and lengthen, and then we extend the deflector dam a little bit longer to continue pinching that aperture. The thalwag now wraps around these structures rather than heading straight through like it used to. That additional length is how we reduce our slope and make the whole system more stable. Here, you can watch the thalwag change the part of the stream where most of the water is moving. It becomes longer when the stream goes around a channel spanning BDA and a deflector dam and interacts with other BDAs as well. So you've seen how sometimes the incision trench needs to widen before it can begin a grading sediment and how making the stream longer reduces its slope and makes the system more stable. Let's look at some examples of how together these changes can reconnect the stream with its floodplain, add structure and diversity to support many kinds of life, and make this site more favorable for beaver to recolonize. As you watch Megan weave this BDA, notice that the stream is roughly ankle deep. The following year, also during low flow, we demonstrate one way to test how deep the new scour pool is. <laughs> <Woo -hoo! laughs> These plunge pools are an important change that we've seen in the stream. They provide cooler water for fish in summer and add a lot of diversity to the channel, which can allow the system to support a more diverse array of life. Watch volunteer Greg Bufundo just five days after we started construction in August of 2016. If you build it, 
They will come. Here, beaver, beaver, beaver. And look what we discovered that very same week. The beaver ended up staying for 18 months, and they even wove one BDA before we could get to it. Now, we've seen beaver pass through the site over the years, but they haven't colonized the project area since the incision occurred in the late 1990s. It's not surprising that they left after their temporary stay, given the lack of beaver food and construction materials on site. The site is dominated by reed canary grass and alder, but we've planted 1,500 native plants so far of many different species. We're working hard on re-establishing the native plant community that will help beaver come, do their work, and stay longer, but that's a story for another day. The Triple Creek site has seen a lot of changes. Ever since the stream downcut in the late 1990s, the water has stayed in the same trench and flowed in the same pathway, no longer braiding its way through a wetland. When water has been plentiful in springtime, before the BDAs were installed, high flows would race through the site. As of 2020, after the installation of 1,069 posts across 43 different post lines, even during exceptionally high flows, the water now spends more time here and has begun spreading out. We have talked about a lot of different changes in this segment. We've looked at how sediment has built up, how the stream now has lots more twists and turns, and what these changes can mean for biodiversity on the site. In some places, the stream has reconnected with its floodplain at Triple Creek. In other places, this connection is still in the works. Overall, this jumpstart has brought us a lot closer to the ecological functions we know the Triple Creek wetland can provide.